YouTube, this is Charlie 426 and today we have the review of the Premium Bandai Exclusive, or P Bandai Exclusive, HUC Gundam Geo 4, or Slash Unit 4. So, it's been a long time uh, since we, the only Gundam Unit 4 as a kid we had was the Master Grade version, which came out very, uh, a long time ago, and finally we have the HUC version, and I'm really glad that this came out after the Premium Bandai Exclusive Gundam Mud Rock, because the arms on this kit are the same structure as that, and uh, those arms, I really love those arms, because number one, this kid no longer suffers from the Alex Syndrome. What the Alex Syndrome is, is basically where if you look at the Gundam Alex, we all, every time we see the Gatling guns in any art style or artwork, the Gatling guns looks like they're actually on the side of the arms, when originally if you actually... But the main reason why we always see them on the side is because the arms are twisted. So if we reposition the arms, the Gatling guns are, are supposed to be on the back, like this. And when you actually try to do something with those guns, it looks it gets very awkward with the posing and such, because you're technically not bending the arms 90 degrees, or twisting the arms 90 degrees, you're actually twisting them 180 degrees. Uh, well, and the way how the structure of the arms on this kit uh, actually fixes that odd issue. So anyway, let's get on to the review. So let's see what we got. So as usual... Uh, let's go over components. For those who are wondering, you, uh, mostly we have never seen this Gundam in the anime. Mostly we've seen him in manga and in games, usually. I would like to point that out. So what you get, of course, is obviously the Gundam uniform itself. And at this point, I think it's safe to assume that we can get, we will be getting a premium Monday version of the Gundam Unit 5. Uh, which has the big Gatling gun. So other than the mobile suit itself, uh, hand-wise, we get the multi-purpose hands for left and right, and we get a nice-looking backpack with two beam saber hilts on top, and then we get a lot of stuff here. So let's go over stuff that you're originally supposed to get. So number one, let's go over the sticker sheet. So we have a good number of stickers, but at the same time, most of these stickers, um, I would say not everything is necessary, but the ones you see here, the blue ones, are mostly that goes onto the shield. So on the shield... Every blue section you see here is a sticker, which is not really that great, So, which is why I'm not a big fan of this shield. I believe they did the same thing with the space version of the Pell Rider. They used a lot of, uh, how should I say, they used a lot of stickers on the shield at, as well, so yeah. So on the shield there goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's already 6 stickers as well. So on the kit itself you use mostly these stuff, but I did not use the V symbol on the crotch because I call that in gold here number number one two three are the eyes and the head camera cameras which I really don't mind using uh, and then we have this long one which goes onto the weapon and then we have these two for the scopes for the weapons but once again I, de I decided not to use these because they don't really look that good so yeah so here we have the shield and then we have a shield connector now technically or originally the shield should be able to to uh, fold up but this one does not have that gimmick because they actually use the same shield mold from like previous kits which I believe should be the Pale Rider space version and but we do still get the shield connector that goes onto the arm which I will be doing the demonstrations later and then here we have a beam rifle with a trigger finger on oh, oops never mind so we have a beam rifle with a trigger finger um, I believe this beam rifle is a it's called the hyper beam rifle and only specific kits had these which I believe mostly should be at this point is the the premium bond exclusive HUC pill rider space equipment type so yeah and then we have a moving scope and here's one of those stickers that you're supposed to apply here but once again being a fully black uh, beam rifle I don't really mind having the scope black as well and then here we have a trigger finger for the right hand as well and then here we have a, this is actually a, a weapon storage system for the Mega Launcher. Yes, we have the Mega Launcher here, and this is what you use to uh, plug in if you want to store it onto the back. So I'll be showing that later. And then we have the the two beam saver hilts. Well, I mean, beam saver effect parts. So obviously, yeah, we get beam savers. And, if I, uh, and then here we have the Mega Launcher, which is one of the big highlights of the kit. Uh, you see here, this is actually a one of those wire wires that you know we usually get, but not the thin ones. But these are actually one of the more uh, thicker ones as well. And the way how you uh, plug these in is that well, it's not actually you plug them in. They are actually you pretty much fold them inside so they don't actually pop out that easily as well. And the Mega Launcher looks amazing. Of course, it's not 100% color accurate or design accurate because there's like multiple versions of these designs. So. Uh, depending on which design you saw, this may seem a little bit different or may have some different details going on here. 
Uh, for now, the only lacking detail I would say is these wire parts. Now they have to be red because these are actually connected and now popping out there. So yeah, if you want to be color accurate, you have to color the these fake wires uh, red as well. Once again, I'll be showing more in the, deep, in the demonstration, and then here we have some equipment parts for the booster pack or booster equipment, which is also called the BST. So we have the uh, the shoulder armor parts uh, for uh, in general. So by attaching the BST, this actually uh, allows the Gundam to be used more longer because the the Gundam Unit Four and then Unit Five are technically much more better than the original arc 78 they have since they don't use the core fire system or core block system they have much more space in the inside the body so they, they gave it more cooling system which allows it to have more thrusters more speed and more longer usage time so these are the equipment parts you do and i will demonstrate how you attach these all right so other than that here we have some leftover parts we have this one that looks like a uh, this is actually not a polycap this is actually a full uh, plastic piece that looks like a polycap and then for some reason we do get another trigger figure hand, but I've tried using this on the beam rifle, but this does not actually fit. So I'm going to assume that uh, this hand is meant for a, a specific different weapon uh, on a different kit. So yeah. Alright, so let's go over the art review. Or uh, let's go over the articulation. So uh, yeah, it's been... <laughs> after getting a job, it's really getting tired to do the, make these reviews these days. I'm not going to lie. Alright, so let's see what we got. So here we have the head, obviously the eyes are a sticker, and then the head camera front and back are a sticker. And once again, they have the the typical neck polycap joints, so once again, we have we can go down that much, up that much, and then 360 is also possible. Yes, this kit does use polycaps, but there's no left or polycaps as well. And then, let's go over the body. Now, the body does not really have any ab crunch, and then 360 twist, I would say it's not possible, because if you look at the backpack, there's a lot of stuff going on here, and obviously these parts are colliding. So, the way how this works is that I'm going to take off the backpack. This is how it works. So, you have a basic backpack, and then you have this part that allows you to attach this section right inside the backpack as well. So of course this part does actually sometimes depending on how you you know treat this these sections here they might pop out so you need to take off the backpack and then push it back in so just keep that in mind and then here we have the the two beam saber hilts and then here look at by looking at the arms we have the basic ball joint connection so which allows us to go forward and backward 360 twist is possible and the arms can go about 90 degrees to the side. Now, here is the interesting part with these arms. So, those who bought the Premium Bandai exclusive HUC got the Mother Rock should know how these work. So, number one, we still have the basic dull jointed bend, which is very good. And then here we have the beam guns, which are built into the arms. The, I believe the Pale Rider should have the same thing, or at least something similar. I'm not sure about design. Uh, and then we still have the typical 360 twist on the in entire arm as well. But what you just saw there is that we have another 360 twist on the lower arm, which allows us to have no problems uh, when to use the the weapons that are built on the uh, the back of the arm. So as I said, this does not suffer from the Alex syndrome. So let's say this was a typical kit and did not have this uh, rotation. So if and this was the Alex, the Galinga would be on the back. So what would happen is that you would have to twist. Boom. Sorry about that you would have to twist the entire arm like that. And this actually later becomes a little bit awkward to deal with in the long run as well. So, yeah, this is actually very helpful. So, And the arm is a little bit stiff, as you, as you saw. Nothing broke, so no need to worry. So with this, I can just now rotate the arm like this, and I can still have a little bit the bending motion right over here, or in this position as well, I can still bend. So this is very, very helpful. So well, once again, after the Gundam Mother Rock, I can definitely tell or have a feeling that we might get an HUC Alex revive sooner or later. Okay, so we've seen that. And the hands are your typical ball jointed hands. And then here we have a hole here, which is actually meant for the shield connector. Okay, then let's the side skirts or the waist section. So the side skirts, uh, they move a little bit, nothing too much. Back skirt does not move at all, and they're pretty much covered up. And then the front skirts, these parts are all color separated pieces. The black piece and the yellow piece are different uh, color pieces. And obviously the black section here is also a separate piece. Of course the, the V symbol on the crotch, you have, they give you a sticker, but I decided to use a gold gun marker. And the front, front skirts originally come in a single piece, but they allow you to uh, separate them if you want to do so. 
Likewise, we these are pretty common these days. We have a side swivel going on here. We can go forward a lot. The backward, not so much because of the back skirt, side skirt. Despite having the side skirt, you can almost go 90 degrees, so no need to worry about that. And then we have a nice double hip bend. Uh, bend going on here, and the leg color separation is also pretty good. We have this black section, yellow section, blue section, all color separated pieces as well. And your feet are your uh, typical ball joint feet. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the articulation. So it's pretty much on par with modern kits, so nothing too special other than these amazing arms. Now, since we've seen the basics of the kit, I'll be right back with the demonstration of the equipment. Okay, I'm back. So currently I have the mobile suit itself ready with the BST equipment. So even though I do say BST equipment, it's basically the booster equipment which allows the Gundam Unit 4 to operate a much more longer time and give it more boost as far as I know. So at the first part, I forgot to mention that they, there were actually sticker decal sheets. I forgot. Somehow I lost these and now I found it back. So, and then, currently we have a lot of TB symbols, which goes for Sora, but not Thunderbolt, I would, like to, I would like to point that out. And then we have all these Federation symbols as well, so yeah, you can go crazy with these. So, currently what you need to do, or pretty much what the BSC equipment is composed of, is number one, is the the shoulders and the extra gas canisters on the, or fuel canisters on for the for the backpack. So, and depending on which game you played or which manga you uh, you saw, is that the Gundam Unit 4 could be referred as the... Sometimes it's portrayed as this form with the Mega Launcher, or sometimes uh, it's actually formed with the BST equipment with the Mega Launcher. Because the Mega Launcher is not part of the BST equipment as far as I know, but that, I could be wrong on that part. So, yeah, let's see how this works. So, I'm going to show you guys how, how the process goes on, because I feel like that's one of the aspects that you guys might be curious about. So let's go over the shoulders. So on the shoulders, you may have noticed these parts on the side. So uh, here are these parts on the side. They, they look like they can clip onto something. And if you saw about that, you are correct. So what you need to do is, number one, is to open up this section on the top of the shoulder, which I did on the other side. And it's pretty much simple. You have this shoulder of here, and there's actually a front and back. So the one with the small yellow thrusters on, on the front has to go up, obviously, the front. And then if you look at the bottom section here, you have a hole there. So what you do is you line the shoulder onto the top as well, and then you lock it into place with this place, with this part. You lock it up and the top section as well. You might need to wobble it around to get into the exact position, but most of the time it works pretty well. So you do the same thing onto the other shoulder, pretty much lock it into place, and you have the shoulder equipment equipped. And, it'll, and just with the shoulder equipment, it looks much more better and looks, you know, color... Uh, color coding wise it looks you know more natural as well now for the backpack so what you need to do is pretty much attach these fuel casters onto the side so I'm gonna attach one right now come on there we go so basically we have a hole here a peg there nothing too di nothing too difficult of course they like to slide if you don't do it 100% correct correctly so I think we have those and then we have this part uh, which is meant for storing the mega launcher onto the back and there we go. And now is the main finale. Uh, but of course, uh, number one is to attach this section, this part, which is the energy pack. This is the energy pack because the Gundam uniform is did not have enough, uh, did not have or did not have enough energy to actually charge the Mega Launcher to its full potential. So, which is why they attached uh, this extra charging, uh, you know, device. But of course, this one's not exactly completed. They were still working on it, so this thing was actually pretty unstable. So. Uh, if you saw the manga or played any game, there might be you might have seen two scenarios where the pilot died or he actually survived. So uh, originally he died. I would like to mention that part because of the explosion. He was able to succeed, you know, succeed in what he was trying to do, which was taking out a entire fleet with this mega launcher. But because of the unstable energy pack, it, it exploded and killed the pilot. Of course, the the what if uh, scenario was that if he actually survived, then yeah, he goes on. So currently we have the Mega Launcher on here as well, and while that, the way how the shield works is that we have a uh, peg here, hole there, and just need to connect it as well. And if you if you don't want to have it on the side, you can always change the position as well if you want to do so. So be my guest. And also the connector itself, oh boy, is connected to a ball joint, so you can always rotate the part around and then always change the you know adjustment as well. So where you want to put the shield onto the arm. All right, so let's get on to the uh, demonstration right right away. So obviously, uh, with this mega launcher on, the only thing you could pretty much think of would be 
the pose where he's charging up and firing the cannon. So with the extra arm articulation, it's much more easier to, you know, do the double hand pose and all you need to do is pretty much get a stand and get ready to fire. And there you go. You're pretty much set to, set to go. And the good thing is that the, the second handle right over here, and here's the sticker right over there, uh, does not actually require to do the, you know, taking off the, the disassembling the hand. You can just plug it in as well. And yeah, you have the you already have the charging pose, and you're good to go. So at this point, there's only one thing to show you guys, which I think I can just show you guys right away. So of course, get the handle does move a little bit easy, so they do tend to like you know get in a different position. So yeah, and we do have an action base connector right over there, so you don't need to worry about that. So I would like to mention you have to use the same hand as the beam rifle to attach this hand, and I would like to point out that. The weapons don't have the hole and peg system, so in the long run, the hand, the handle may feel a little bit, you know, wobbly. Or number two, uh, the trigger finger hand might start to disassemble on its own pretty easily. So just keep that in mind. And then what's this? Uh, and if you don't want to have it on the kit all the time, you can. What you can do is basically, you can fold up the front handle or into the inside, and then you can store the cannon onto the back, like that. So yeah, you do have everything uh, settled. Of course, the only, you know, the tricky part would be this wire because it's going to be all over the place, but at least it's not hindering the articulation as much as you think. And that's pretty much it for the review. So yeah, if you're a big fan of this unit, you can you should definitely get it because it's pretty in Bandai as well. And then at this point, we can expect a unit five as well. And anyways, thank you for watching the review. If you guys got any questions about the kit itself, uh, feel free to ask. And I always have more stuff, kits, more kits to buy and build and make reviews out. So please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.